Be quiet. <laughs> Good morning. How y'all doing? They making jokes this morning. Warriors. Wake up. Yoo-hoo. Beep, beep. Doesn't it beep or something? <laughs> hey, what's up, Dream Chaser? Gucci. Hey, Favor. Hi, Miss Regina. We love you. Hey, Brittany Berry. We love you, Brittany. Hey, Val. Good morning, Allison. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Trina. So, for those who, like, started first, the comments are delayed. For some reason, it doesn't show, like, the first few until, like, after the videos. Over. But I love y'all, too. Y'all know today is our fast. Good morning. Post your country and your flag, please. Good morning. I love you all. Hey, Jose. I love you. What's everybody up to this morning? Cousin. What? My cousin on here. Hey, Liz. Y'all know I'm from the country. Hey, girl. How you doing? <laughs> How y'all doing? John Crump has joined. Bless the Lord. I'm looking right at her. Yes. <laughs> Post your country and your flag, people. Sharina, I got your request. I am praying for you. Bless you, Sharina, my sister. Country and your flag, if you're able to do that, please. Thank you, Didi. That is amazing what you did. Thank you, thank you. Linda Rains, a praise report. Do tell. Do tell your prayer warrior family. Do tell. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Rosin from the Shy. What's our temperature, y'all? What is it? See, they think they know what I want now. They already looked it up. Okay, 53? Mm -hmm. What's the high today? 80? Uh, <laughs> Chris, my cousin is here. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Dr. Lane. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raven. How's everybody doing? Jack, what's up? Devorah Woody, bless you from East Orange, New Jersey. Y'all are so amazing. Okay, bless you from Nigeria. We love you. Thank you. Hi, Myra. Hey, Yolanda. Erica, have you been joining Erica? <laughs> I love you. Taniva, bless you. Don't let the, I'm getting all carried away, y'all. Don't let me lose track of time. I love y'all. Y'all know today is our fast, right? Y'all couldn't wait, right? For those of you who are on the 40-day fast, this is our corporate fast. Good morning, good morning. Okay, it's 40 degrees in Newark, New Jersey. Gotcha. Uh, good morning, good morning. So, yeah, uh, today's our fast. If you're in, say, I'm in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. We are doing um, liquids, juice, water, or liquids, not like caffeine, coffee, but like if you need to do like some kind of organic soup or something, that's that's okay, um, from sun up to sundown, and we have committed to doing this for the entire year. You know, I made this commitment before I knew I was going to commit to a 40-day <laughs> liquid fast, but God has sustained us. It is day 31. Ooh, nine days to go. That is so awesome. Hi from the D. Bless you. My family's in Detroit. Uh, good morning. I, Tiffany, when I saw Tiffany win, I'm about to say, Tiffany, you are not in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tiffany from Charlotte, North Carolina. Bless you. You're in. Thank you so much, Williams Home, Denise. Hi, Michelle. Bless you. Okay, you're in, Antonia. Hi, Sharonda. Y'all, where are y'all flags? I'm not seeing enough flags. What is going on? Y'all know tomorrow we go on um, CBN and 700 Club. Y'all got to come with these flags. You need to be practicing now. Post your flags. Thank you. 41 degrees in New York City. Hey, Monica. Bless you, Sarita. You're in. Praise God. Beverly is in. Team, we know you in. Yes. <laughs> Charmin is in. Good morning, Deborah. Tanya is in. Praise God. Bless you, Cynthia. Hey, Mama Cynthia. I love you. You're in, Lisa. Wonderful. Mama Cynthia Galate, are you in on this fast today? <laughs> Sadidra, are you in? Okay, one more minute. Man, I'm having fun. Rosalina O'Neill from Augusta, 51 degrees. I love you, too. We love you, too, Rosalina. Prayer Warriors. We're one man strong. Make sure you're posting that. Hi, Cammie. I love you. Hi, Jennifer. Bless you from Georgia. Lillian. Bless you from New Jersey. We got a lot of people from that area. Hey, Walona. Love you. Okay. Bless you, Andrea. All right, Carlisa. Bless you. Thank you for posting your flag. Yes. Green hearts for Avery. Our time keeper. What time is it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> they got me. Okay. So, yeah. Green hearts for Avery. Yellow Hearts for Monica Sykes. Okay, Cheryl, she can't find her flag. We love you. Tell us where you're from. Uh, Green Hearts for Avery. Yellow Hearts for Monica Sykes. You know, just believe in God to heal our precious Avery. Uh, believe in that God will give us answers for Monica Sykes and bring her home to her precious mother, Miss Regina. She's one of the prayer warriors on here. Um, if you want more information on Monica, you can just 
befriend Miss Regina Sykes. She's on here faithfully. So y'all, for more information and, and updates, do that. Um, but yeah, we believe that Monica will return home. She's in business since October of 2016. So nothing is too hard for God. So yes, I love you, Miss Lene. And um, also, what else are we doing? Purple hearts for me. Thank you. Y'all see my shirt? Thank you, Chandra. She blessed me with three totally amazing shirts. Those are the last three shirts I have worn there. And I still have several more from other people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got up some, a little business to tend to today, y'all, so y'all can know what's going on. Make sure you share this video. It's important. It's how we evangelize the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we will be in 2 Samuel today, 5, 1 through 10. I'm sure you guessed it because I told you yesterday we were going to go on to, chapter, to the next chapter, which is 5. 2 Samuel 5, and I named it Don't don't underestimate me so we'll talk about that um corporate fast today if it's your birthday happy birthday birthday warrior tell our um prayer warriors if it's their birthday happy birthday you were born in february you are just awesome 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 my birthday is on the 6th which is monday um but i have four days of my fast left on my birthday so there'll be no birthday cake for me but i do believe god is going to give me a holy surprise hallelujah jesus so okay so y'all quickly oh see i got so much to do y'all okay i need y'all to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All right. On Twitter and Instagram is Kelly Elaine, like all one word, K E L I E E L A N E, just the way it's spelled on this page. And I've never really put a whole lot of effort in Twitter and Instagram, but I need to because we need to utilize every avenue available to get this message out about prayer, about the faithfulness of God, about the power of fasting. And so please, when y'all finish, find me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm also for you, you, you guys kept asking and asking. So I we are now uploading each video to YouTube. For those of you who know people who are not on Facebook that need to watch, that want to watch the videos, that they could benefit from the videos, my channel is Kelly E. Lane. So it's not hard. Everywhere you go, it's Kelly E. Lane. So on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. All right, last thing before we get into the word, um, make sure you're sharing this video, is I'm going to need you guys to follow the um, CBN. If you're not already following CBN News, please go and like and follow that page so that when I go live tomorrow, uh, I'm going to need y'all in that place with purple hearts and your flag so that I will know that the prayer warriors have showed up. So I'm going to need you to come on, show up on that. So the CBN segment is tomorrow, which is Thursday, February the 2nd. It's at 12.05 Central Time, which is 1.05 Eastern. If you have another time zone, so you know how to figure it out. Eastern is 105 and Central, it is 12 on 5. So remember that. And then also I need you to follow the 700 Club Interactive page. And because I'm going to go on there for their first time ever going Facebook Live. That was the flyer I posted, the graphic I posted last night. And I'll remind you in the morning and, and all that. But just letting you know, you need to like and follow that page also. Because if you're able to, I need you to show up over there too with your purple heart. So that is tomorrow. And we're going to be doing that one at 11.10 a.m. Eastern Time, which is 10.10 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's the first time ever going live. That's the 700 Club Interactive. I N T R A C T I V E. So you put that in and follow and like that page. And so when I show up live tomorrow, I'm going to need y'all. Y'all promise y'all is going to be there with me. I'm going to be looking for y'all. So that's the two things you have to remember as far as Facebook. One more thing we get into this word. Uh, the 700 Club, the live um, televised interview about my book, When God is Silent. My book here that God gave me. When God is silent, um, we'll be talking about that. Just talking about what to do when it seems like God's answer your prayers and how just to develop an relationship with God. That will be live tomorrow morning um, at 8 o'clock Central Standard Time and 9 Eastern. I will post all this again. You with me? I know you are. Okay, that's that. I said enough. Did I get everything, y'all? Now, we're going to keep going back into David, seeing what David is up to and what's going on today. And I love this. This one was a little tricky today. It was a little complicated. So if you read and didn't quite understand uh, what you were reading, you are not alone. Second Samuel 5, I'm going to read from the message version. Y'all ready? Y'all with me? Y'all post where we are. Second Samuel 5, go ahead and share this. Now we've got all of our housekeeping issues done. All right, Second Samuel 5, uh, begin, beginning in verse 1. Here we go. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to us. We are hungry to learn more about you and about your word and about King David. We thank you this morning for the privilege to come before you. As always, shoulder to shoulder, just ready and eager to hear what will be spoken from the throne room today. Oh, how we honor you and bless your name. Have your way, Holy Spirit, because we need you to teach us this material. We thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, 2 Samuel 5, beginning at verse 1 in the message version. I am reading 1 through 10. Before long, all the tribes of Israel approached David in Hebron and said, Look at us, your own flesh and blood. In times past, when Saul was our king, you were the one who really ran the country. Even then, God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel and 
and you'll be the prince. All the leaders of Israel met with King David at Hebron, and the king made a treaty with them in the presence of God. And so they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king and ruled for 40 years. In Hebron, he ruled Judah for seven and a half years. And in Jerusalem, he ruled all of Israel and Judah for 30 years three years. David and his men immediately set out for Jerusalem to take on the Jebusites who lived in that country. But they said, you might as well go home. Even the blind and the lame could keep you out. You can't get in here. They had convinced themselves that David couldn't break through. But David went right ahead and captured the fortress of Zion. I just love this. David went right ahead and captured the fortress of Zion, known ever since as the city of David. That day, David said, to get the best of these Jebusites, one must target the water system, not to mention this so-called lame and blind bunch that David hates. In fact, he was so sick and tired of it that people coined the expression, no lame and blind allowed in the palace. David made the fortress city his home and named it City of David. He developed the city from the outside terraces inward. David proceeded with a long stride, a larger embrace since the God of the angel armies was with him. I love that, y'all. The last part of that, of 10. David proceeded with a long stride and a larger embrace since the God of the angel armies was with him. And I declare that over your life today that you will proceed with a longer stride. Thank you, God. We will gain more territory because the Lord is with us and we cannot be underestimated. So that's the thing. Don't underestimate a child of God. Your enemies may be laughing and poking and taunting and making fun of what you're doing or what God's called you to do. But the thing is, they're trying to size you up with their natural eyes and they're going to miss out and be totally embarrassed like the Jebusites were because they're looking at you at face value. They're sizing you up based on who they think you are and what you used to be and what you did way back when. And they're not understanding or recognize the anointing that rests upon the life of a prayer warrior. So they're looking at who you were back then instead of realizing who you are now. Or they're looking at you for face value and saying, well, how can he do that? Or how can she do that? Or like they did Jesus. They're like, isn't that just Joseph's son and the carpenters? Like people underestimate you and it's okay to underestimate me, but don't you dare underestimate the power of God that rests on the inside of me. And so when you go forth, you're not going forth in your own strength and your own ability. You are going forth with the power of almighty God resting upon your life. And see, that's how the Jebusites missed it. I love this. Oh God. So here we go. Here we go. This is what's happening. Guess what? David finally, finally, y'all, how long we've we been reading about this? He's finally anointed as king. How many times did this make for David being anointed? How many times? Three. That was the third time. Y'all, he was anointed as king three times before he finally ascended to his complete reign as king. Remember, he was anointed back there with the sheep. He was anointed when the prophet Samuel came in the first book of Samuel 16. He was anointed then. And then when Saul died, the tribe of Judah came forth and was like, you know what? We're going to do the right thing. We're going to work with the rest of these tribes. We know you're supposed to be king. Just like all of Israel knew. Saul knew. Everybody knew. But they wanted to play dumb and do their own thing. And remember Abner, Uncle Abner? Rest in peace. He <laughs> he wanted to anoint King Ishabeth. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like they just kept stepping over David. And for a season, it looked like the promise was not going to come to pass. But see, that's the way it's going to look. It's not going to seem like the promise is going to come to pass. But trust me, if God is giving you a promise, oh yes, it will surely come to pass. So here we are, anointed back with the sheep in 1 Samuel uh, 16, anointed again when Saul died, when Judah came forth and did the right thing, and they allowed David to rule over them for seven and a half years before the rest of everybody got in line with it, you know? And so that was the second anointing. And now here, y'all, the third anointed, and this time all of the elders of the other tribes came forth, and here they go. So like, yeah, um, you know, we're, you know, we're, you're flesh of my flesh, and, you know, bone of my bone, uh, we know you're supposed to be a king, you know, like back when you, you know, right after you defeated Goliath and when you were in Saul's house and, you know, you was, you know, beating the Philistines and every war you fought, you you won. We know you're supposed to be king. So my bad, you know, about that thing with Ishmael for all these last few years. Sorry about that because now we're ready to make peace because, you know, we know you love us and we know you care about us. And we, we saw that you've been proven because we watched you. We saw what you did with Saul. Now we see what you did with Judah over these last seven and a half years. So now, you know, delay but not deny. You know, hopefully no hard feelings. Please, King David, you're our king. You're our master. We know that you're going to do the right thing. So all the elders came for and they anointed him. And you know, your flesh. Imagine, I don't know how I would have responded. You know, sometimes you'd be like, about time. 
about time something finally came through, but it just showed that they received it and he ruled as their king. And that's just like so, so awesome that he didn't have that spirit, you know, of like retaliation or, you know, talking smart or having an attitude, you know, he just accepted it and he knew it was his portion. But as we keep looking at the characteristics of David, his strength, his integrity, um, his nobility, we see that even in this, he accepted it and he moved forth into the things that God has called him. But here's the thing, y'all. As soon as he was anointed as king over all of Israel, he was sent out for battle. His first exploit was to take over Jerusalem, y'all. And here it is. The thing about Jerusalem, it was fortified. It was strong. And so the Jebusites who dwelled there literally thought it was a joke to see that David was coming to take over and conquer Jerusalem. And not only that, y'all, David, so strategic, y'all, in tune with God. When you're in tune with God, your steps will be strategic. People don't know what you're doing. They'll be laughing, like, what is he or she trying to do? But you will know that God has ordered you. God sent him for, that was his first exploit. So as soon as he was finally anointed as king of all of Israel, y'all, Right up, going out for battle again, he had to conquer Jerusalem. The thing about it is, these were the Jebusites, and uh, Jerusalem belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, right? So it was about timing because David could not have gone forth to conquer that tribe or that place any sooner because he had to have the support. Remember, all the elders have now came together and surrendered, and now David is the king of all of it. Had he gone prematurely, it would not have turned out this way. He had to wait on the divine timing for everything to be right. He had to make sure that he had the support of all the tribes before he went forth to conquer Jerusalem. But after having support from all the tribes, including Benjamin, because remember, Benjamin was related. That was like relatives of Saul, and they had been faithful to Saul for many, many years. They had adhered to the house of Saul for a long time. So David couldn't just show up with his men and just expect a victory if he had done it in the wrong timing. But he waited. He waited for God to see him forth. And so as he sent forth, y'all, <laughs> I closed my iPad now because this is a trip. <laughs> as he goes forth, they see him coming and they put lame and blind people. It is believed that they put lame and blind people along the wall as he's coming up to this fortress, as he's coming up to Jerusalem. Because they're saying, you know what? His match is the lame and the blind. So they literally put these people in front of them, like just to make a mockery out of David, out of his army, out of what God had called him to do. And I don't know where they were. I don't know what they've been thinking. Have they not heard about David by now? Everybody knew. Remember, Saul slays thousands, David slays tens of thousands, ten thousands. How could they have thought that they could, the lame and the blind of this place, could conquer David? But that's what happens when you get too sure of yourself. That's what happens when you get overconfident in your own ability. And not in the ability of God. They they served idols. When you come into the city, into the forts, into the fortress, they had brass tall idols standing there that did not have eyes or feet. Okay, they served statues. They believed in statues. So we don't know if it, their overconfidence was a direct result of these idols that supposedly were protecting this fortified place. Or was it the fact that they just took David for a joke and just didn't think he could do it? They just think he would win because Jerusalem was so strong. So they thought David didn't pay them any mind, y'all. He sent orders. They conquered Jerusalem. And then he told his men, and as you slay these Jebusites, I want you to get rid of every blind and lame. Throw them over in the gutter. Throw them over in the ditch because they have made a mockery. I, I hate it. I hate the fact they have done this. They made a mockery out of me. And most importantly, they have made a mockery out of my God, our God. And since they're making a joke out of this, not only are we going to take over everything, destroy them, but we're going to throw them over to the gutter. Every blind and every lame person that you see, those they place along the wall to taunt us to make a joke out of what God has called us to do, flip them over. Put them over in the gutter. Let them rest there so that they will see this is no joke that when God calls me to a thing he has given me the power to get it done and so this is exactly what he did and here's the best part of all he settled right there it was called the city of David in the very fortress in the very fort the area where the, the the idols were the brass idols were the very place where the lame and the blind had been placed along the wall to make a joke out of what David had been called to do when he got rid of all of them that is where he dwelt that's where he built his house that's where he built the house of his guards and attendants and it's like the very thing and I always say this and y'all don't probably I know y'all don't know this most of y'all some of y'all do but it's I was telling the group this morning it's like the very thing that the enemy uses to taunt you or to embarrass you. You know, the very thing that people laugh at you about is the very thing that God will turn around and give you victory in. Because I'm going to tell you, I know everybody's seeing this amazing work that God is doing in my life on Facebook now. But I'm telling you, a few years ago, I was like the laughing stock of Facebook. People used to talk about me. They used to get on there and say, Kelly, who? How many husbands is she going to have? She She's a drive-through bride. She just pull up 
through the drive through and pick out her husband. They used to just make posts and say, what's her name this week? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Just on, on Facebook. And that is the very thing God used, the thing that I was ashamed of, the thing that I was afraid of. That is the very thing he used for his glory and to deliver his people, to show people that it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter because God can make everything brand new and use the very, he can use the very thing that people laugh at you about. The very thing that you are ashamed of or afraid of, the very thing that tried to take you out. God will give you victory over that very thing as he did for David. The very place that was a place of torture, a place of of terror, a place of torment, a place of mockery. That very place God gave him the city. It was called the city of David. A place that was fortified Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the same place as he was spoken of in the book of Revelation as the new Jerusalem. You know, it's so amazing what God will do when you're obedient and you listen to his instructions. You don't get sidetracked by the mouth of naysayers when people are nagging and talking, complaining, and laughing and poking and taunting. You ignore those people. If God has given you an instruction, you carry out those orders and you don't worry about the rest. You just stay focused on what God God has called you to do and that is why I call this don't underestimate me because in underestimating me you are underestimating the power of God that rests on the inside of me and you now that's the hallelujah and amen God is faithful so that's what we're going to pray around this morning Thank you, oh God, for showing us in your word, for showing us in 2 Samuel 5, God, that we cannot be underestimated, those who belong to your house, Father. We thank you for it, oh God. It doesn't matter if we look like we can't overcome whatever it is in our lives, God. With you, there is no mess. There is no rival. Oh God, we have the victory because we rest inside. God, you rest inside of us. And you give us the power, God, to just war and rage over our enemies and receive the victory. So God, we thank you for it this morning. Thank you for this word. Thank you for showing us that in due season, everything turns around, God, that in due season you will promote us, you will bless us, and you will elevate us, God. I thank God just as the men, finally, the elders of the other tribes finally, God, after seven and a half years, God, they came to David and was like, my bad, you were the king all along, you were the one who did all the work anyway, but Lord, it took them seven and a half more years to see that they was really supposed to be the king over Israel, but God, that just shows us according to your word, it doesn't matter how long it takes for the manifestation of your promise, it doesn't matter how long it takes for people to see the anointing is on our lives. God, we can trust and believe that when the timing is right, when the fullness of time comes, God, not even taunting Jebusites can hold us back. Oh God, modern day Jebusites, those who poke and taunt, oh God, not even they can hold us back from the assignment that is placed upon our lives, God. So we thank you for that assurance in your word this morning. Oh God, we honor you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing the words to come to life and for giving us assurance today that we cannot be underestimated because it's not in our own power. It's not in our own strength. It's not our own ability. We come in the power and the wisdom and the favor and the knowledge of Almighty God. We thank you, God, this morning for that favor, for that wisdom, for that strength, for that power, for that grace, God, to go forth and do the things that you've anointed and appointed and ordained us to do. God, we thank you, God. We will not be sidetracked, oh God. We just thank you for the assurance in your word this morning that you will bring into pass the things that you have promised, the prayer words, the dream chases of God. So again, because of our faith, because you say as we come to you, we must believe that you are who you say you are, God, that you reward those who diligently seek you, God, every morning, every morning, Monday through Friday, God, we come before you together, not one or two, but God, in the masses, the prayer boys, we line up shoulder to shoulder before your throne, and we know that you see us, we know that you hear us, God, we know that you are well pleased with what we are doing, oh God, and so we thank you, as we keep coming to you, God, as we come up to you, God, our prayers go up as a mighty roar that shakes heaven, God, we thank you, God, that you are responding to our prayers, and for that this morning, we give you glory, oh God, because we just believe you for the impossible, we don't care how fortified it may seem. Oh God, we don't care how even they look, God, but Lord, with you, we are more than conquerors. That is your word. That is your promise of God. So we honor you this morning. As I always ask, God, please go before the prayer words this morning, oh God, and make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight, God, and just make every high place low. Let them trample and stomp. Flip them over to the gutter, their enemies, oh God. That is our prayer this morning. Thank you for it, oh God. And Lord, just enlarge their territories. Enlarge their borders, God. Call them to dream bigger. Place bigger dreams in their hearts than what they can currently dream for God. Increase it, God. Let them know that nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with you because all things have to bow at your feet. Every impossibility, God. So we thank you for that this morning, God. We honor you, Lord God. Place your hand upon them, God, the prayer warriors, the dream chasers, God, those who are relentless pursuit of you, in relentless pursuit of you, God. No matter what, they won't give up on their dreams. They won't give up on the promises you have given them, God. Those people with bold faith who pray bold prayers, God. Honor their prayers, oh God. Give them holy surprises and blessed moments, God. Bright ideas and witty 
inventions. That is our prayer this morning, oh God and Lord. We just thank you for precious every, oh God, and we just cover her in your blood, Lord. We don't care how long it takes. We're not going to give up, oh God, until you answer our prayers, oh God, in a way that will give you the most glory. God, for Monica, although it has been months, God, for both of them, God, we're not going to give up, Lord. We're going to keep coming and just knocking, just knocking at heaven's door, just saying, Lord, our Father, have mercy on their families, God. Have mercy, God. Please, Lord, just answer our prayers. Answer our petitions, God. We're coming to you because we know that you're our supply. And we're coming to you, God, because we know that you hold the answers to our prayers. So, God, we thank you. We thank you for that assurance this morning, oh God and Lord. We just bless your holy name this morning because you are the Lord, strong and mighty. You are our mighty fortress, oh God. Strong on. We thank you for it, oh God. Your eyes are piercing. Father God, we thank you, oh God, for this morning, God, that you, you sit high and you look low, God, and you look at every detail of our lives, God. Not only are you looking, but you are concerned with them, God. So, we just honor you for loving us the way that you do, God. We honor you for forgiveness. How you forgive us when we make mistakes, God. We honor you for your compassion, oh God. We just thank you for this morning, oh God. Let us be like David, God. Men and women of integrity, of strength, of patience, of wisdom that move strategically when you say move, God. That is our prayer this morning, oh God. And Lord, before we close out, God, let us arm up as we always do before we go out into this world, Father God. Lord, with the belt of truth around our waist, oh God. With the helmet of salvation, Father. With the breastplate of righteousness, oh God. Lord, we were sandals of peace. We were sandals of peace, God. And we thank you for peace. World peace in the name of Jesus, God. World peace. We cry for this morning, oh God. And Lord, we carry the shield of faith. Nothing is too hard for you, God. We won't stop asking and believing you for the absolute impossible. And oh God, your word, the sword of the spirit, hide it in our hearts, God. We will not sin against you. Oh God, I just thank you for this morning, oh God. And Lord, every prayer request that is coming in, every prayer request, every dream, every vision, you can type them in if you haven't already. Everything, God, that is on this post that will show up later on this video, God. Every heart that will be magnetized to this video and magnetized to this page and magnetized to this movement, oh God. Lord, let them see you. Let them find you. Let them know you. Let them desire you more. Let them hunger and thirst and chase after you, God. Lord, just do it, God. I just honor you for this one, oh God. Bless the prayer requests that come in, God. Those who need healing, Father, heal them this one, oh God. Those who need deliverance, Father God, deliver them this morning, God. Those who need to be redeemed, Father God, redeemed them this morning, God. But reconciliation is needed, God. Let reconciliation come forth, oh God, and Lord, as I mount that plane today, God, and you send me forth in your name. I thank you, God, that it is covered and protected, oh God. And I thank you, God, that the prayer words are covering me in prayer. I thank you for their prayers this morning, oh God, because I know that what you're doing in my life is not because of anything that I've done, God. It's because of your favor, your grace, and it's because you are lifting me up off of the prayers of other people. So, God, this morning, I just ask for a special blessing for every prayer word that has ever spoke a blessing over my life, that has ever watched a video or prayed a prayer with me, Lord. Just bless them, God. Give them an uncommon blessing, even this week, oh God. Reward them for their faithfulness, oh God, in helping me to advance the gospel, God, for those who have never shared a video, God. Touch their hearts and quicken their spirits. Let them know it's not just about them, but it's about evangelizing the gospel, spreading the good news to those who may have never heard the name of Jesus, God. So this morning, touch their hearts, God, and just stretch this video far and wide, oh God. And Lord, we just be careful and quick to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you so rightfully deserve. You are the Lord, and we bless your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Thank y'all for the prayers. I love y'all so much. Thank you, Jesus. Bless prudence, Father God. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Wendy's petition. God, I ask you just to cover it in your blood. Thank you, Colette, for sharing. Bless you, Sharon. I love you. Thank you, Lord. Just answer Shalisa's prayers, God, and Carlene's prayers, God. Just answer their prayers, God. I thank you for this morning, Lord. I thank you, oh God. I thank you for Gwen's petition. I thank you for it, oh God. I thank you for it, Lord, that you're seeing these prayer requests and you're answering, God, that you're enlarging Annie's territory, God, giving her bigger dreams. I thank you for it, oh God. I thank you, oh God. I just bless your name for your people and how we believe that you would do more than we could ask or think God. So we just bless your name, oh God. In Jesus name we have prayed. I love you guys. Have a great day. I'll be back. I'll see you in the morning. And Lord, may I let he please hear Mia's prayer request, Lord. Thank you, God.